Is it tracking now? Wow, DJI Osmo. Here we go. Is it going to follow me? Look at that. That's amazing. Wow. Technology. It like, tracks me all the way around like the robot. porch. It's like robot gear. Yeah. Anyway, Beast Porch. Here we are. We're going to talk about winemaking because uh, usually it's Mimi's kitchen. Is this going to follow me? Yeah, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> It's usually Mimi's kitchen, my wife, cooking, but she's she's gone and got herself pregnant, so I'm taking over. Beast, yeah, beast to... porch. <laughs> picking over. I'm not cooking though, I'm making wine. Right, so basically I'm just going to run through uh, how to make wine. Uh, a basic wine will get you drunk, but this one's a bit different. This is going to be a healthy wine. This is going to be a super fruit wine. So I have my super fruits here. I've got four fruits here. First one is acai berry. Acai berry. Can you see that one? Yeah. Acai. This is uh, a little berry from the Amazon in South America. It's touted as one of the best super fruits in the world. It's so healthy. It's got antioxidants, more antioxidants than cranberry, raspberries, blueberries, all the top berries, uh, it improves your cholesterol, it's uh, possible anti-cancer properties, boosts your brain function, everything, it does everything, it's the best. Where are you going? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so yeah, that's good, that's, that's the top one, I've been waiting to use this for a long time. Blueberries. This is the daddy, the daddy of the fruits. I mean, the acai is really good, but it's very difficult to get hold of. Uh, this is the daddy of the fruits, blueberries. Uh, this is packed with, as usual, antioxidants, uh, phytoflavonoids, whatever that is. Sounds good. Potassium, vitamin C, loaded with it. Um, this helps the heart, uh, your bones, strengthens your bones. It gives you great skin. It lowers blood pressure. Uh, manages your diabetes, it helps prevent cancer, it helps your immune system, it's, it's the daddy. If you just have one fruit in your life, blueberries, if you can get hold of it, that's the best. Have you lost me there, Don? Or are you still tracking? Yeah, we're still going, all right. Dragon fruit, this, wow. What does it say? This is an exotic fruit. It is an exotic fruit. It's a real nice fruit, this one. Full of uh, prebiotics. Uh, it's like a real. For those of you who never had dragon fruit, it's like a, it's like a strawberry pear, um, and it's got loads of seeds in its pulp, in its uh, flesh, um, and it grows on a cactus over it and in the Philippines. And it's a lovely seed speckled fruit. It's rich in antioxidants as usual. Uh, it's fat free, high in fibre. Uh, lowers your blood sugar, like I said before, loaded with prebiotics for your gut, so it strengthens your immune system, it's top draw. Don't taste that great sometimes, it's a bit bland, but I don't know, the juice has probably got a bit of sugar in it, so it's all right. Last but not least, tamarind. Okay, this is, uh, this is grown all over the Philippines, I think. Sourced from Cavite, Bulacan, Batangas, Zimbales, if you're from the Philippines, you'll know exactly what I just said there. Uh, this is a tree which uh, it produces the seeds which are in a pod. Um, when they're ripe, they're really sweet and sour, and it's used a lot in Asian cooking. Um, really nice. Yeah, I think this has got a few sweeteners in it. I should have got the natural one, but don't worry. We'll work it out. This should still be good. So yeah, another super fruit. Uh, not, I never used this before, so I don't know if it'll t taste like shit afterwards or not. I don't know, but we'll find out. This is full of vitamins, anti-inflammatory as usual, helps treat diarrhea, fevers, peptic ulcers, another uh, powerhouse. I'm going to come down here a bit. Did that follow me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. Right, so basically I'm just going to talk about the uh, winemaking process. It's 
quite simple, but you just need a few things. First off, we're gonna we need to boil some water up. So we get a big old tub. We're gonna fill this up maybe one or two times, depending on how much wine you want, and we're gonna boil this. Basically, I like to make five gallons of wine at a time. So. What I tend to use is a primary fermenter, which is a big old bucket like this. Uh, I like this one because it tells me how much I've got in there, pints and litres. It's got a little tap or spigot on it, so when all the dead yeast collects at the bottom, you just empty it to about here, and then you can throw all your dead yeast away. It's quite handy. Or keep it if you want to use it for some, make another one. <coughs> But yeah, I've got another one here, it's a different type. It's got a big old airlock on it, which is uh, what you need for wine. So basically what we, what we do, we clean this out with bleach, make sure it's really sterile. I can't stress enough how important it is to sterilize this before you use it. Uh, get all the, because you get any bacteria in your wine when you're making it, it ruins it, totally ruins it. And you don't want to waste all that money and effort and time by ruining your wine. So basically, we get this, we're going to boil the water up, and then we're going to add... You coming down with me? Yeah, that's cool. Then we're going to add five kilos of sugar, well, gradually. Um, stir it up, boil it up, make a nice sort of syrup. And when that's all dissolved... We pour it into the primary fermenter. Pour it into here, so it should fill it right up. <laughs> Still follow? Yeah, I'm tracking. Right, then we add the juice. So we've got all the water, all the sugar dissolved in that boiling water, which is in our primary fermenter. And then you add all your juice. So you take all the juice, and you put it all in there. Give it a good old stir. Then you need citric acid. Uh, this just gives it the wine a bit of tartness, a bit of a bit of zing. Uh, you can just buy uh, citric acid, but if you've got lime juice or calamansi juice, then just I don't know, just a load of juice and pour it in there. Not a load of juice, but a good amount. Then you need a yeast nutrient. Like I said, if you, don't, if you can't get your hands on yeast nutrient, the next best thing I reckon is raisins. These are, these are full of uh, yeast nutrient, which will help the yeast in your uh, wine eat all the sugars up, um, because the yeast loves the sugar. And this will react well and make your wine nice. and It'll give a bit of body to the wine as well. Tannin, this is quite important. Uh, I'll just show you. This is what I bought from uh, a place called Young's. Um, wine shops sell this wine tannin. This tannin is it provides body and texture to your wine, um, and it gives it uh, gives it that mouthfeel of dryness, you know, that you get in, in red wines. Um, yeah, so quite important. Or you can just put a, a cup of tea in there. It's the same thing. Tea has got lots of tannin. Just not with milk, obviously. Then, these are really important, these are counting tablets. I mean, when I was talking about cleaning your fermenter out earlier, I said about cleaning it out, sterilizing, it's really important. Um, these are a sterilant. You can use these to clean your fermenter out with just a bit of hot water and melt them down and put them in here, shake it about and clean them out. But when you make your wine, and you've got your boiling sugar in there with your fruits and your citric acid and your tannins. Put one of these tablets in, one tablet per gallon usually. Uh, melt these down first in warm water to get a nice uh, liquid. And then put this in the must. The must is usually what the f if, you're, if you're using fruits or, or juice mixed with the water, it's called the must. And uh, these tablets they will neutralize the must. Um, later on you use it for, uh, when you put the wine into bottles, you put one of these bad boys in there and it will stop the wine from oxidizing. You do not want your wine 
meeting oxygen because it will just ruin it, turn it to vinegar. So this, this stops wine turning to vinegar later on. But for now, I will add these in the must before the yeast, you put the yeast in, just to neutralize it. Very, good, very important. Right, so when all that's done, we just leave that overnight and let it cool down a bit. And then in the morning, I like to use you have to put the yeast in. This packet of yeast is five grams. This is Red Star Premier Classic. Really good wine yeast. Don't use bread yeast because it's just, it'll make your wine taste like shit and it won't be very strong. This will probably make it about 11, 11 to 13 percent. But you add this to your wine when it's all cooled down. Don't add it to uh, boiling water because it, it might kill the yeast, I think. But wait till this is all cool, cooled down sometimes overnight and then add that to it, cover it and put the airlock on. This airlock, see, I'll show you how to do this later but before you put the yeast in though, this is a hydrometer if you have one and you want to measure how much uh, alcohol you have or the uh, percentage of alcohol, just fill this up and this little hydrometer, it's really cool, this will tell you how much alcohol is in your wine. So you take a reading at the start, and because there's so much sugar in it, this will sit up here. But as the yeast eats the sugar, this will gradually sink, and then it will give you a final reading, and I'll show you the calculation later on in the video. But this will pretty much tell you how much sugar is in your wine, and potential alcohol volume. It's very cool, very cool. That's it for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and boil some water up and put the sugar in. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll probably fill a bit later. Okay, cool. Banana wine. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right. So. I gave a brief description earlier in my porch about what we were going to do with the super fruits, super fruit wine. So we have all our ingredients, I've moved them to the kitchen. I've got my fermenter here, which I've cleaned out, bleached it, soapy water, washed it all out. Yeah, like I said before, uh, you can use these Camden tablets, just crush a few of these down, swill it around in here and that should sterilize it. Again and it should sterilize. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, dissolve this five kilo of sugar in uh, in this pot here. So this pot here. I'm um, just going to boil this water up, five gallons in there, dissolve this sugar, add this fruit juice, add the calamansis, add the raisins, and the Camden tablets and the tannin. Then we'll cool it down and afterwards when it's cool we'll add the yeast. We'll activate this yeast and then put that in, close it up. Jobs are good. Okay, so to start off, I'm just going to put my juice in and make sure my uh, spigot is off so it'll just come straight out. So, dragon fruit. Now this recipe is very experimental with me. I've never tried any of this. Uh, I think I might have done blueberry once and, it, and I messed it up, so I'm not sure. I usually do white wines. I usually do pineapples and bananas because I've done it so many times, I just know they're very forgiving and they work well. Bananas are a bit tricky, but pineapples very forgiving. Red fruits, I've done it before as well with cherries and made real good wine. Um, and with some other red grapefruits, uh, not so good, so I'm hoping this will work. But anyway, we'll give it a go. Dragon fruit. So what have we got? One litre. Yeah. It tastes a bit better than the fruit, actually. A bit more sugar in that. 
acai berry. This is the this is amazing. I used to have this in Brazil on the beach in a bowl, acai bowl, like with your music and stuff like that. Tamarind. This is either going to really work or it's going to fail miserably. so powerful and strong already. So that's four layers of fruit juice. Okay, this is where we boil our water, five liters, uh, five gallons. So. I'm gonna have to do this in two stages because my pot doesn't hold five gallons. No problem. It's probably wise to do this in two batches like this anyway because very difficult to tip five gallons of water in there in one go anyway, so I'll just do three quarters for now, three quarters for the second one. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put half the sugar in this one and half the sugar in the other second. Come a bit closer, Don, have a look in. What I would recommend to use these well, long stirring spoons. You can get them online, especially for uh, for wine making. They, they're plastic. Uh, I tend to use plastic because if you use long wooden spoons, the wood, the wood tends to hold more bacteria than these, and you do not want bacteria in that. So it's always best to use these like uh, plastic, long plastic stirring spoons because they're easily uh, washed. What we're just going to do, I'm not going to really boil it, I just want this sugar to dissolve. Okay, you can let this boil. Um, the sugar dissolved, so that's good enough for me. Plus I've got to pour into that. I should have used the wide mouth bucket, but this one's a really good bucket, but it's, uh, it's not very wide. So if you go tip that in here, it's a bit tricky, but we'll give it a go. This is my stupid way of doing things sometimes. And then we'll do it again.
So, five kilos of sugar. I think there's a ratio of, I think it's one pound of sugar per one percent of alcohol. I might be wrong, I mean, so uh, I'd have to check that out. But I think one pound of sugar, so what's that, 2.2 pounds to a kilo, pounds to a kilo, so 2.2 times five is 11, I do believe. So probably about 11% of alcohol. I think that's how you work it out from here. Ah, cheers. As you can see, I make a lot of mess. But this is the beast way of doing things. So, this is the second half of the water. Uh, the sugar's dissolved. Don't do this at home. Yeah, that's hot enough. So I'm gonna transfer that into the rest of... So I'm gonna transfer the rest of this into the fermenter, the primary fermenter should bring it all the way to the top or near, near the top. Don't try this at home. There's an easier way of doing this, but I'm just an idiot sometimes. Right, I'm going to leave a gap at the top because when this ferments, this is going to rise to the top. The bubbles are going to rise to the top. Um, all the CO2 is going to come to the top. And if it's if it's a, uh, a, a vibrant uh, fermentation, it will bubble like crazy. And if the, the water is too high, it will just blow into the airlock and come out the sides. And it's just a bit of a mess. So try and leave a little bit of gap at the top. Cut some raisins. So I've got my raisins, I'm just going to chop them up, open them up a little bit. Like I said before, the raisins are a yeast nutrient. These help uh, the yeast uh, combine and eat, eat the sugars and multiply. It just helps the fermentation process. Um, so just chop them up and then add them to your mixture. Well, I've chopped these calamansies up. You use calamansi or lime juice, or like I said, if you've got citric acid, then use that. But if not, do it the natural way. So there's about a teaspoon of uh, citric acid in there, or lemon juice, lime juice. Drop that in there. Now, tannin. Like I said, if you haven't got tannin, you can use tea. You can just boil a cup of tea, or uh, yeah. Just put a tea in there, don't put milk in there obviously, but just tea has got lots of tannin in. I'm just gonna use a teaspoon, that'll do me. Drop that in there. Whack. Lovely. Okay, give that a bit of a stir after you put the tannin in. Mix it all together, the citric acid, the tannin, and the raisins. So what I like to do, I like to add some of these Camden tablets into the mixture before I put the yeast in. Um, I don't think it reacts well with the yeast. I think it will uh, uh, have an adverse effect with the yeast. It won't, it won't allow the yeast to work properly. So we have to do it way before. And this will clean up, this will neutralize the must. And uh, if there's any bacteria in there, it'll sort it out. Basically, make it all make it all nice. So yeah, I'll just crush a couple of those in, two or three of those. And just add that to the mixture. Oops, shoot. Okay. Give that a stir. Drink. 
Right, this stage is pretty much done. What we need to do next is add the yeast, but because I've got some semi-boiling water in there, I find that it doesn't work as well when it's hot. So I, I wanna let this cool down first before I put the yeast in. But what I like to do is put this in warm water and sugar uh, and leave it like in the microwave overnight or cover it. And in the morning, if it's activated, it will be bubbling and then you just put that straight in there. So I'll just show you what I do. Okay, I've got some, uh, got some warm water here, around about 110, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you don't want it too hot, you don't want it too cold. Look at that, beautiful. Yeah, just drop a bit of sugar in there. And there, give it a bit of a stir. And then you can leave that for a few hours, usually about three or four hours it will start to work overnight or whatever. I'm going to use it overnight. I'm going to use this in the morning. So, let's say that all again. So I've got sugary water in here. I've just added the yeast. Uh, the yeast will react with the sugar and it will activate and then I'll use this in the morning when this is cooled down. And then it will be a few days and it will be bubbling away and your wine will be starting. So I'm going to put this in the microwave and leave it for tomorrow. Okay, so I've got all my sugar dissolved in the water. I've got the juice in there. I've got the lime juice. I've got the tannin. I've got the raisins. I've got the crushed Campton tablets. I'm going to be putting the activated yeast in tomorrow and then the jobs are good. One. But tonight what I need to do is just cover this over so we don't get any bugs in here and stuff like that so That's the first step to making wine. And I'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay, this is uh, the next day. We're about to put the yeast in, which we activated last night. And I forgot my yeast. Wait. Okay, so this is the yeast. Just look at that, Don. That's the packet of yeast, would I mix with a bit of warm uh, water and sugar. And that is definitely activated, it bubbles a lot. So we know that's gonna be a strong fermentation. But before I put this into our wine sort of mix, I wanna take a reading, um, I wanna take a gravity reading with my hydrometer. Now this is full of water at the moment, and if this working right, this hydrometer should be uh, one. And if you look at the top there, it will say, one so that's the that's the um, the gravity reading of water on its own it's just one you spin the hydrometer around so it just gets rid of all the bubbles that could be stuck stuck onto it so it could hinder the actual reading so you give it a spin before you check your reading anyway that's just water in there I'm going to get rid of that And now we're going to take a reading of the wine itself. So Don, I'm just going to get close up to this now. Yeah. Okay. Take a little reading. Probably the wine up to here. And then this hydrometer will rise because it has sugar in it. So it's uh, heavier than water, I think. What we're going to do, we're going to find the initial gravity reading on this. So get your hydrometer, give it a spin, gets rid of all the bubbles that could be stuck on the hydrometer. And then we'll take the reading. 
Now there's a bit of a meniscus on here where the water curves up on the against the the tube. So you need to get this right. So that's about there. So that says potential alcohol in there is about 12%. And the reading is 1. Point, oh God, I can never read this probably. 1. Point, Okay, the initial gravity on this is 1.70. So just keep that in mind, 1.70. Now I'm going to put the yeast, which I activated last night, into the wine. And then after that, what I like to do is just cover it with like a muslin cloth or just any kind of cloth that you have. Uh, so it just lets some of the oxygen in and helps the yeast eat up all the sugar. Uh, you tend to do this more with red wines. With white wines, I'd probably use an airlock straight away. But this initial, uh, this initial act of letting the oxygen in, I think, is quite important to get the yeast moving. But once it starts to bubble, then I would put the airlock on. some left in there but not going to be too anal about it. Okay, now what I'm going to do, some people just put the airlock on but what I like to do, especially with reds, I just like to put this cloth over it just to stop the bugs getting in and to let some of the oxygen in to help the yeast just at the start. Pull that nice and tight. just leave it and that's it pretty much um, after a couple of days I'll probably I'll probably put the airlock on so just fix the airlock on there fill this with water put that on top and then as the CO2 releases it will lift this up and then drop down just so it doesn't because there's little holes there and once the, the air hits that it will drop down and keep rising and then dropping down and that stops the oxygen getting in after that so, I hope that's clear. I'm not very good at explaining things sometimes. <clears throat> when it's after about seven to ten days, this will come right down, and I'm going to take a final reading of this. Now, when when that sinks down to about the yellow to the gravity of water, like one, or just above that, which is nine nine zero. Then we get our initial gravity, which was 1.70. You minus the final gravity, which is 1, and that will leave you with 0 0.70. You times that by 131.25, and that will give you your alcohol percentage. That's the magic number, 131.25. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a bit hard to explain, but I'll show you when the wine's finished. That's it. That's it. I think we're done. We're done, Dom. We're done. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're just going to check this in maybe seven days and see what happens. All right. See you later.